Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this evening's planning application uh, meeting on the uh, 7th of February 2023. I shall start with item one, which is the evacuation procedure and meeting procedures. So I will read this out verbatim as we do have a number of uh, new uh, members of the public joining us this evening. So I ask that you ensure that you are all signed into the signing sheet provided. These will be used in the case of an evacuation. A fire drill is not expected, so if the alarm sounds, please evacuate the building quickly and calmly. Please use the stairs and do not use the lifts. Once out of the building, please gather outside the Lloyds Bank building on the opposite side of the road. Exit by the door by which you entered the room or by the fire exits which are clearly indicated by the standard green fire exit signs. If you need any assistance in evacuating the building, please make yourself known to a member of staff. The meeting is being live streamed and recorded for future publication on the Council's website. Please can I ask that you turn your mobile phone off or to silence for the duration of the meeting. Item number two, apologies. I have one apology and that's from Councillor Shepherd. Uh, there is, however, no substitute provided. Uh, item number three, the minutes from the previous meeting. Uh, hopefully members have had the chance to have a look at these. Um, are there any issues before I sign them? Or are we all happy that I signed them? Yeah, I'm not seeing any dissent, so I shall sign those minutes now. Item number four, declarations of interest. Do any members have any declarations of interest? Um, Councillor Wilson. Uh, thank you, Chair. I don't know whether it's interest or contact or neither, but just in the interest of being open and transparent, Mr Sahib is a objector, an objector on the first application, and he is uh, known to me, but we haven't discussed this planning application at all, so just so that everything is above board. Okay, yeah, thank you very much, Councillor Wilson. That's that's duly noted. Any other members? No. Okay, uh, do I have any declarations of contact? Uh, so, yeah, sorry, of contact. No. Okay, so no declaration of interest or contact. Okay, in that case, we'll move on to our first agenda item for the evening. So I shall hand over to Claire. an outline application with all matters reserved except for access to up to 29 dwellings on land off Willow Close. Most of the site is within Neaton and Bedworthshire Borough Council's area, but the northernmost part lies within the administered area of North Warwickshire Borough Council. Objections have been received as detailed on the agenda, but notwithstanding these objections, the application has also been reported to committee at the request of councillors Croft and Mandy Tromond. The land is not designated for any specific land use in the adopted borough plan, meaning that there is no specific restriction on this land prevent preventing a residential use. The site has good public transport links and is considered to be a highly sustainable location and within the defined settlement boundary. In terms of affordable housing, policy H2 of the borough plan requires 25% of all new developments to be affordable on sites of 15 dwellings or more. This application proposes seven of the dwellings to be affordable, which is therefore acceptable and in compliance with the policy. As this is an outline application, no further details have been submitted in relation to the housing mix or the location of the affordable units. This would form part of the reserve matters um, application if the outline was approved. At this time, planning policy or the housing section has no ab um, objections. The site lies within the Whistleford Park and Barpool River Valley landscape character area. It is used for the grazing of horses with stable buildings along one boundary. The site has a generally open feel and remains substantially undeveloped. The illustrative layout of the proposal shows development being focused on the northern side of the site, with the eastern and southern sides given over to landscaping and the redirected footpath. No statutory consultees have raised concerns regarding the loss of this Greenfield site or the illustrative landscape scheme. The proposal would, would, would permanently change the landscape of the site to the development of residential houses. However, the site is surrounded by on three sides by residential development and this form of development would not be incongruous to the immediate landscape and the wider area. 
In terms of residential amenity, the site is adjacent on three sides to residential properties on Salisbury Drive, Canterbury Lane, Willow Close and Lillibird Drive. Oops. Although purely indicative at present, um, the layout um, as shown as illustrative does show that distance standards could be met. A further assessment would be made at a reserve master stage. In terms of visual amenity, the indicative layout provides an illustrative plan of how the dwellings may look. However, this is purely illustrative and could, could change as part of a future reserve master's application. With regards to contamination and land stability, the site is adjacent to the Coral Authority's high risk development zone. However, the Coral Authority have reviewed the application and the submitted coal mining report and have no adverse comments to make. Environmental Health has not responded to the application and therefore it is assumed they have no objection. However, it is recommended the standard contaminated land conditions are imposed and are included as condition 12. In terms of air quality, the site is not within an air quality management area or the clean air zone. Environmental Health have no objection. Conditions covering a dust management plan, electric vehicle charging points and that all gas fire boiler installations should be of a specified standard are included on the recommendation. In relation to archaeology, an archaeological assessment has been submitted with the application. There is a potential for archaeological deposits dated from the prehistoric, medieval, post-medieval and industrial um, to survive across the site. The county archaeological team have therefore requested a programme of archaeological field work to be completed, which is covered under condition 7. In terms of ecology, the indicative plan shows that the proposal would retain a significant amount of open space, and the majority of this is formed within the corridor along the southern part of the, of the site, and the provision of attenuation basins to the east. The application is supported by a preliminary ecological assessment, and this incorporates a habitat survey, badger survey, and reptile survey. This concludes that no amphibians, badgers, otters, water voles, or reptiles have been surveyed on site. Biodiversity impact assessment calculations have been submitted, which show that the scheme has the potential to provide biodiversity net gain of over 10%. The parks team have no objection. In terms of highway safety, the site is proposed to be accessed from Willow Close, which is in, within North Warwick Borough Council's boundary. The existing access will be redesigned to be 5.5 metres in width, with 2 metre footpaths on either side. As the access is within North Warwickshire's area, it will be the, for them to, to determine the suitability of the access arrangement. The application has not yet been determined, however, county highways have no objection to both applications subject to conditions. Whilst the access is for um, North Warwickshire's consideration, the impact to the wider highway network by the impact of this development is also a consideration. However, the MPPS is clear that development should only be prevented or refused on highway grounds if there would be a, an unacceptable impact on highway safety or the cumulative impact on the road network would be severe. County Highways did previously raise concern with regards to the impact on the wider highway network and stated that the existing Cold Hill Road and Plough Hill Road junction is over capacity. However, following on from additional modelling and mitigation discussions, County highways are satisfied that the movements created from this development could be mitted against and could also provide a minor improvement to the base arrangements. The applicant has put forward a mitigation scheme that could be, would be done under 278 of the Highways Act, which includes curb, curb, curb alterations at the junction. County highways have also been working to identify a wider improvement scheme to improve the overall capacity of the junction to accommodate the various allocated sites within the area. County Highways would therefore prefer a 106 contribution to the wider Highways Improvement Scheme rather than the minor changes to the highway. The Council is awaiting the final figure requested by Highways, however this can be agreed as part of the 106 process. The agent has agreed to the principle of providing these 106 contributions. In the event that the wider improvement scheme didn't go ahead, the minor improvement scheme put forward by the, by the applicant would be the fallback position and provide mitigation for this application. Also of relevance to this application is an appeal decision recently in November last year for Tunnel Road. In the decision letter, the inspector states that in terms of the effect on the highway network, the additional vehicle movements created by the 70 dwellings on that application would not amount to a severe impact. 
In terms of flooding, the site is within flood risks 1, 2 and 3 and has Barpool Brook running along its western and southern boundaries. All of the proposed developments would be located along the northern side of the site, which is, lies within flood risk zone 1. Surface water generated from the development would be routed and, routed and stored within the two attenuation basins on the site. Neither the Environment Agency or the County Flood Risk Team have objected to the proposals. A number of 106 contributions have been requested, as detailed on the screen, including healthcare for services at George Elliott Hospital, highways improvements, plain open space provision, sports and leisure facilities, libraries and public rights of way. The applicant has agreed to these contributions. The recommendations therefore approval, subject to the completion of a legal agreement and the conditions as set out on the agenda and addendum. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, can I just ask, do any members have any uh, points of clarification they would like to ask Claire at this stage? Because there's quite a lot to take in there. Councillor Wilson. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, you said that if the 106 contribution discussions fall, it would revert to the applicant's proposals. What are those proposals and what has County Council assessed them as? Because we have neither that or the wider improvement scheme information before us and I think that's important for us to know. Yeah, the, the works will be done as highway works under 278. Um, they are basically curb alterations and reducing the width um, of, the, of the footpath on that junction. Um, highways are satisfied with that because they, they say the, the footpaths are actually wider than they need to be at, at the moment anyway. And highways are, are satisfied with that mitigation scheme. Thank you. Any other members? No? Okay. I've got two speakers on this. Before I go to the two speakers, however, I will also uh, draw your attention to the fact that Councillor M. Tromans has also um, sent a uh, letter to members of the, the uh, Planning Application Committee on this matter. So I hope you've all had the chance to study that as well. Okay. So she's, she's submitted that as an objector. Um, so I'll go to the first of our two actual speakers that we've got here. So I'll start with Mr. Sahib, who's speaking in objection. So you have three minutes when you're ready, Mr. Seed. Yeah. On behalf of uh, all the residents uh, and the, everybody who signed the petition, uh, I, I, I'm, we are objecting this uh, is regarding the highway capacity and Plough Hill Road is already over capacity with the current planning application and the con consideration or constructions Roughly 1,000 extra houses will be added to the Ansley uh, Island Chase pub route. There is all, also severe lack of infrastructure in the area with schools, doctors, surgeries, do dentists, nurseries already at breaking point. And, and the only one that are not really local, hospitals miles away on the A Trouble Four. Elderly and sick residents in Willow Close, which is, this is where the problem is, will be adversely affected with both an initial noise and disruptions and ongoing extra traffic and persons using the close on a daily basis. And going back to the, 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 the curb, I will ch challenge anybody to, to show me that you can wa walk safely in the on, on curbs in, uh, in Plough Hill Road. Highway safety in the Coles Hill and Plough Hill Road junction is already very tight and congested and Willow Close is exit or is right by it. Also high ri risk of flooding in the, pur in, in the purposed development lack due to the Barpool Brook. And also there is a lot of mining shafts and again I'll challenge anyone to, to say there is no mining shafts in that area. Loss of green and visual impacts on the area will, de will be uh, determined de detrimental to the current near nearby resident. Also, loss of wildlife and bio biodiversity birds, bees, small animals, insects, etc. And uh, also the, the, the environmental heritage and landscape, the Neaton Common. 
potential false reading of the traffic management study which must have been impacted by the COVID-19 lockdown. And this is another big, big, major problem. Uh, and I'm thinking that uh, Nuneaton is going to be, become a concrete jungle. And, uh, and I would like you to, to think carefully before you, uh, you, uh, you do any uh, decisions. And uh, s uh, lastly, uh, uh, we just saw, as a resident, we just saw uh, uh, an article on the newspaper which is sadly misread by everybody to say that it's been given the green light, uh, considering we are just in, 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 in t talking about it at the moment. So I would like you to, to consider talking to whoever or uh, in the newspaper not to, to keep uh, highlighting like these uh, headlines where people are uh, scared and nervous. Thank you, Mr Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Sahib. Can I ask do any members have any points of clarification I'd like to ask from Mr. Sahib? Okay, I'm not seeing anyone. Um, in terms of what you just said, Mr. Sahib, I will um, you know, write to the newspapers as, as a councillor and as chair, because I think it's, it's, it's not very nice when perhaps there is some misleading. So if you could just leave that with me at the end, and I'll have a look at it. If I think that it warrants writing to, I will write to them and ask them... Uh, not to do things like that because it does cause, as we understand, distress to members of the, of, uh, the public, and that's not what anybody wants. Okay, um, we've now got Mr. Uh, Nick Carr, who's speaking, uh, who's the applicant who'll be speaking. So, Mr. Carr. Hi. Yeah, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak. I'm Nick Carr, Operations Director for Roscon Strategic Land. The applicant, I'll try and avoid uh, too much repetition with uh, your officers. Uh, presentation, so I'll uh, cut out if, yeah, some of the things I'm intending to say. Uh, so the scheme before you today is a high quality residential development consisting of up to 29 homes of which 25% are to be affordable. The site lies adjacent to Barthel Brook and approximately 64% or 3.4 acres of the site are to be laid out as informal, publicly accessible open space. This creates an attractive setting for the new homes and a tangible benefit for new and existing residents. There are no technical consultee objections from any statutory consultee, including highways, the lead local flood authority and the environment agency. The site is bounded on uh, three sides, as your officers uh, informed you. It represents a windfall development and, as confirmed in your officers' report to committee, is acceptable in principle. The site has also been identified as a residential allocation for 29 dwellings within the borough plan with the preferred options consultation. Uh, we are aware of comments received from neighbours raising ecological concerns. Uh, the site has been uh, subject to a series of ecological surveys um, and we do recognise the importance and the local value of Barthel Brook and its routing is unaffected. Indeed, the proposed landscaping strategy allows for ecological enhancements along the brook and connectivity with the adjacent Nuneaton Common. A biodiversity net gain is delivered on site. Uh, regarding concerns relating to flood risk, the site is within zones 1, 2 and 3 and we have worked closely with the lead local flood authority prior to submission of the application. The water course has been modelled for flood risk to ensure the accuracy of these zones with development cited in zone 1 only. This modelling has also been independently reviewed. Uh, any permission on the site will be accompanied by section 106 um, agreement delivering a range of contributions including health care, uh, improvements to Plough Hill Road, Coles Hill Road Junction, and just to uh, cover that off in a little bit more detail, so it's an either-or, so um, the 106 will be worded as an either-or, uh, whereby in the first instance it will be the larger mitigation scheme, and if that doesn't come to fruition, then it would, the fallback would be our alternative scheme, um, which is designed to um, you know, be a, a, a commensurate level of mitigation for this scheme, um, you know, this size of development. Effectively, you've got the footpath at the junction is about 2.6, 2.8 metres wide, and the idea is to narrow that to two metres, uh, which in increases the width uh, at the junction so that if you've got a car looking to turn left, there's more space for them to turn left if there's also a car waiting to turn right <coughs> at the junction. Uh, planning conditions include the provision of electric vehicle charge points and at least 35% of dwellings meeting building regulations M42 standards for accessibility and adaptability. Uh, officers have provided a comprehensive report which covers in detail all material considerations, 
recommendation is unambiguous. The proposal constitutes sustainable development in accordance with the development plan and other policies within the NPPF. Therefore, planning permission should be granted, a conclusion we fully support. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, would anybody like to ask any points of clarification? Councillor Wilson. Uh, thank you, Chair. You alluded to your transport in, in, um, impact analysis, etc. It was raised by one of the, well, Mr. Sahib, about the possibility of the timing of that. Can you confirm when your impact analysis was actually uh, done? Uh, not off the top of my head. I could uh, come back to you, and I don't know if uh, officers have that information available. Um, it. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know off the top of my head the exact time, but Warwickshire yeah, were accepting of the result. Um, are officers able to answer that question in default? Apologies. Unfortunately, without going through the, the, the file and looking for you, we, we aren't able to answer that, I'm afraid, in terms of the exact time scale. Uh, Councillor Cape. Um, I, I was beaten to the shot on that one. Uh, I was going to ask a similar question about when the study was done. Um, I'm also a little bit nervous about either ors. Um, I'm quite simple. I like facts. Uh, I would want to know what mitigation would be put in because having seen the impact of even small roadworks in that area recently, it, it turns it into a deadlock. So um, I'm a little bit unsure about the accuracy of the WCC figures as we are today. Um, any other points of clarification? I was really a point of clarification. I was more of a, a statement, Councillor, but uh, OK. Uh, any other points of clarification? No? OK. In that case, we have uh, before us a recommendation this evening. Um, a recommendation I should read it out is to recommend to grant planning permission subject to a legal agreement and the conditions printed. So to be able to move to the discussion, I need a proposer and a seconder. Councillor Shires, thank you as a proposer. And do I here have a seconder for that? Councillor Hartzell, you first one I saw. So um, any members? Councillor uh, Cape. I'll, I'll, I'll try to get it right this time. Um, I'm a little bit confused about the access uh, through Willow Close. Um, it, it seems that we don't have any uh, sway or say on that. However, if I lived in a cul-de-sac, which was suddenly going to become a throughway, I would be a little bit concerned. So is that for the other council to decide, or is it something that we can consider? No, I don't believe it is something we can consider, because it does fall firmly within the North Warwickshire um, area, so we can only consider the facts before. And this is what makes this perhaps a slightly awkward case to judge, because um, you know we have to make one decision, and they will have to make the other decision on this matter. Um, and obviously, it would be ideal if we could all sit down and discuss it together and come up with a uh, sort of a homogenous plan. But sadly, that's not within. That's not how the system works. Chair, obviously, just for clarity, there is the um, Devon. Sorry, uh, the County Council have sent a no objection to both applications. So that's the application within our area, and also the application within North Warwickshire. So just just a point of clarification, not to deter from what um, the chair has said. Thank you. Uh, so I see your hand up, Councillor Hammersley. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, I do have some reservations with the comments from uh, uh, highways at Warwickshire County Council because they appear to say one thing and then backtrack and say other things. Uh, where on page 26, uh, the highways did previously raise concerns with regards to the impact on the wide, wider highway network. It, uh, as regards existing coastal road, plough road junction is over capacity as existing. And so f any further development would result in the cumulative effect being severe at that junction. Now that's what they've said in, in one breath, then they're saying in another breath something else. So 
it has been noted that within that area there has been accidents. Okay, I think is it 12 slight in severity and four serious uh, to take into consideration as well. Um, and uh, at the bottom, uh, they say the report still recognise moderate harm arising in terms of the operation of the highway network which would conflict with the policy HS2 of the Borough Plan. So there's, there's some grey areas for me which I'm not happy with Highway's report and what they've said, although they have said uh, uh, that they would let it go through. It appears they've changed the mind. Uh, I'm, I'm not happy with the way it's worded uh, they weren't happy, then they are happy. So it's clarification on that for me with highways. I'm, you know, I'm just not happy with the, how it's worded. Thank you, Chair. Yes, thank you, Chair. Obviously, they weren't happy with it, but I think if you look at that middle paragraph on page 26, obviously there was some additional modelling and there was mitigation discussions. So in the first instance, we, had, um, we hadn't got up-to-date modelling and there wasn't any mitigation. Obviously, since then, there has been those discussions. And I think, obviously, in terms of harm, you will be aware, as I think um, Claire alluded to in her presentation, the MPPF is very much about severe harm in terms of the paragraph and obviously they are talking about moderate harm in here um, so although they're saying there's some conflict with borough plan they're obviously not they're saying there is no conflict with the MPPF thank you I was just council Hammers, you got any follow-up questions based on uh, what uh, you just heard uh, thank you chair yeah it it still does not bear well with me moderate harm, severe harm, you know, uh, slight in severity and four serious, they're all, they're all a no in my head for that area. So uh, it depends how we term moderate harm and severe harm. I'm not privy to what you base those figures on to call them moderate or severe. Thank you. Councillor Shires. Thank you. I think I echo really what everybody else is saying, but also I think one, one thing that really does concern me, and especially from driving up and down Plough Hill, Coleshill Road quite a lot, and, and in particular with older, um, potentially more vulnerable people living within that area, actually, if there was um, a reason where, why emergency services need to actually get down there, no matter how big the junction is, no matter how wide it is, with the way that the, the parking is opposite the junction, with the amount of traffic coming down on either side, I just think it's, it's just, it's just, you know, it, you're asking for trouble from there. I think it'd be very difficult for um, re recycling and refuse to get down there. And I think if there was a fire or an ambulance needed, actually it could put serious time delay on that because of having more people on that area. So, Thank you, Councillor. I was just going to say, do we have, what did the um, emergency services come back? Do they come back with anything at all? Yeah, we can still do well at your fire safety. We have no objection. Okay, so no, no objections then from fire and safety, but nothing from anybody else then, just from fire and safety. That was a no, okay. Uh, Councillor Cape. <coughs> Um, in light of the concerns raised about the date of the analysis, was it 2019 during COVID or post? Um, my colleague's comments about severe moderate, the fact that it's big mitigation or minor mitigation. Um, is it possible, I'll take guidance on this, to defer the item until such time as those facts are clearly represented to us in order that we can make an informed decision? Obviously, at the moment on this application, we have had a number of extensions of time agreed. Um, the applicant has made it clear that there won't be another extension of time on this application. So we do run the risk that if we defer this, that they will appeal against 
non-determination. I think, obviously, it also has also been mentioned about the recent Tunnel Road decision and, and the decision that the inspector made there. I think we just need to be, obviously, be careful about whether, if this is deferred, whether the applicant does appeal against non-determination and how successful we're likely to be at appeal when, unfortunately, we have got all the consultees, the expert consultees, with no objection. Um, and as you, you may recall, the Tunnel Road appeal, they actually did have some objection, but that was overruled by the inspector. In this situation, we have got no objection from any of the expert consultees. Okay, any other members? Councillor Wilson. Thank you, Chair. It is a difficult one because I actually sympathise with the objectors quite strongly in this but I'm trying to think of a planning reason mm -hmm. that would be upheld at appeal and at the moment from the sounds of it everything that we might want to put on as local members would be overruled by an absence of expert evidence for want of a, a better phrase um, which would lead to us having to pay significant costs which we don't have as a council being perfectly blunt. I do believe that there is a severe impact on the highway network here. And I, if um, the tunnel road item is where I think it is, that is a significant way away, actually, in terms of actually impact compared to this. Is it the old Cartwright's application that was opposite the other estate? Yeah. yeah. So that is actually quite, what, almost a mile away, probably, from from this site, whereas this site is actually, um, pardon the pun, on the doorstep of, of the junction uh, with Plough Hill Road and I forget the road it is coming down from Camp Hill. Is it still Camp Hill Road or is it just over the road? Yeah, so that is a, a very, very busy junction, which at the best of times is very difficult to navigate, um, as well as the cumulative impact of all the developments along that road you also have the fact that even if you do take the minor modifications proposed if the 106 doesn't go ahead as planned, taking in the, the pavements, around there already people mm -hmm. are parking on the side of the road and the pavement, so all it would do is move the cars half a metre, if that, to the side. Um, so I don't actually see how that is of any benefit unless it was to come with double yellow lines around that particular junction to actually prevent any cars parking on there to give you the field of sight whether you're going left or right unless officers can give me advice otherwise I don't see how we can condition double yellow lines because we aren't the highways authority unless we can put a note on that we want the highways authority to consider it as part of their next traffic management orders or whether the applicant would give an undertaking to apply if that's even possible on their own behalf to put down double yellow lines. That is the only way I can see to, t to try and square this circle chair because I haven't got a reason that an inspector, an impartial inspector would uphold, being perfectly honest, but my local knowledge tells me that the mitigations being put in place I don't think will work. So can officers advise on how we could possibly put those double yellow lines down? Because I think that's the only way we're actually probably going to be able to secure this to resident satisfaction and reduce the impact. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Wilson. I, I mean, I take your point. I think there's a lot of local knowledge in this room and hence you know, why we have um, local councillors uh, on planning and not uh, sort of you know, people who live um, on the far side of Warwickshire making sort of, you know, uh, sitting on these committees. So uh, it is a very valid point, the one that you have made. And I wish it was something that we could condition, but sadly, as you well know, it's not something, and I say, uh, you'd probably sleep a lot better tonight knowing if you could walk away from here that that's something that we could condition or speak to highways about. I don't know if you've got any advice on this one, Maria. Obviously, again, it would just be uh, a question of speaking to them. There's nothing we can do through planning legislation to kind of put something on on any approval in that regard other than obviously the commitment to, to speak to them about it but 
that that's all that's the only thing we've got to play with really unfortunately yeah thank you i don't know whether the applicant's got any thoughts on this one at all Okay, sorry, I was, yeah, at, um, cross purposes. Yeah, I mean, it's, it would be for the highway authority. I know, and then police are a consultee, um, uh, and they would only be willing to do it, is my understanding, if the police are happy that it would be enforceable and people are likely to respect it. Um, it's, yeah, straying slightly outside the area of my expertise on highway matters. Okay, Mr. Sive, I know you want to make a point, so I, I will allow it. If you, if, you, if you do want to make it. The only point I want to make, thank you, is there is no, uh, no, no WLS. No, no WLS, and I'm, 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 I'm very serious about the, the narrow, there is no footpath whatsoever. Okay, um, do I have any other speakers before we move to the vote? Okay, so it's a lot there to consider. Um, and, and, and obviously, yeah, we have to make the decision. We cannot um, try to preempt or judge what's going to go on in North Warwickshire. We can only sort of um, make this decision based on what we've seen here this evening and on what actually applies within our own area. Okay, so um, with that in mind, we've got a recommendation in front of us to grant planning permission subject to legal agreement and conditions as printed. All those in faith. Yeah, sorry. Can I just ask, Chair, if yeah. in the event it is approved, would committee be minded to actually put a note on about the W L lines? Yeah, I mean, I think that's something to, we all to, feel to strongly, to strongly about, council. and I'd, I'd have no objections to that. I don't think any member of the committee, from what we've, we've seen, would have any objections. So uh, I see Maria is already sort of noting that down. Yes, Mr. Carr. Apologies. Yeah. So just for absolute clarity, on Willow Close, on. The right-hand side of Willow Close, as you turn into Flower Hill Road, there are, this is Google Street View four months ago. There is a double yellow line all the way up to the junction with Coles Hill Road already. And then on the other side, there is a double yellow line. So they, they exist already? Members will have to make up their own minds on this because there is obviously a bit of conjecture going on. I know a lot of you are familiar with that area, so you know, I know you will obviously use that to inform the decisions um, that you have to make this evening. So um, all those in favour? Okay, so that's one, two, three, five. Against? Abstentions? Okay, so that is... That is carried, I believe. Okay. Thank you. So that uh, has been approved. Okay. Moving on then to our next item, Claire, when you're ready. Thank you. This application is an outline with all matters reserved except for access for up to 42 dwellings with associated work to include the demolition of number 90A Coventry Road. Objections have been received as detailed on the agenda together with one letter of support. This application site forms part of allocation HSG 8 of the Borough Plan. A concept plan SPD has been produced for all the strategic sites allocated in the Borough including HSG8. The concept plan SPD establishes a strategic concept context for plan applications and sets a baseline position in terms of assessing future schemes which will contain more detailed proposals. A key objective of, of the concept plan is to ensure that the, the strategic land, land allocation is brought forward in, in a strategic and comprehensive manner. It is intended to, to provide a visual representation, representation of policy requirements as well as other key elements and so are conceptual in nature, and they are not intended to be exhaustive and show all required elements. 
The concept plan shows this application site as open space, including playing fields, and the remainder of the southern part of HSG8 is shown as residential development. The SPD states that a linear green space will be created adjacent to the railway la line along the western edge of the allocation. It also states that new areas of formal open space will be created in the central and southern parts of the site. This is an outline application, but the illustrative, illustrative layout does show a linear green space along the western part. Providing there are connections through to the adjoining site, which contains open space, it is considered that the principle of residential development would be acceptable. The layout shows connections through to the adjoining site and provisions can be added to the 106 agreement to ensure connectivity from this site to the rest of the allocation. In terms of affordable housing, policy H2 of the Borough Plan requires 25% of all developments on site, so 15 dwellings of more, to, pr to provide 25% affordable. This is achieved on this site. As it's an outline application, no further details have been submitted in relation to the mix or the location of these dwellings. At this time, planning policy or, and um, the housing department have no objections to the, to the application. The site is located in Landscape Character Area 5, which is known as Balkerton Village Farmland. The guidelines for the Landscape Character Area recommend enhancing the wood wooded fringes of the village through the planting of, of um, wooden copses and linear woodlands. It is also recommended the prominence of the railway line is reduced by existing woodland planting and enhancing that. An illustrative layout has been submitted which shows open space and planting to the western part of the site. Details of the, of the full design and layout would be considered at any reserve matters stage. The information submitted with the application states it is anticipated that the form of development would be consistent with the character and appearance of the development found on Coventry Road. In relation to residential amenity, a noise assessment has, has been submitted. This found that the dominant noise source affecting the development site would be road traffic movements on Coventry Road and the railway line. The report does set out, does set out some required mitigation, such as an enhanced glazing and ventilation, screening to gardens of plots nearest the railway and vibration control measures. Environmental Health have requested a condition covering a noise and vibration attenuation scheme, which is included as, as condition 17. They have also requested a close boarded fence to the boundaries of 1992 Coventry Road on the sides that front the access, which is included under condition 19. As this is an outline application, the layout is not being considered and any re future reserve mat matters application would look at distant standards. <coughs> Access is proposed off Coventry Road, which will ne necessitate the demolition of number 90A. The proposed access would be five metres wide with a two metre wide footpath on each side. Highways have no objection. A transport assessment has been submitted of the application. This shows that the proposed use could generate in the order of 22 two-way two vehicle movements in the morning and 20 two-way movements in the evening peak hours, respectively. This equates to approximately one extra vehicle on the highway network every three minutes. In, in isolation, the scheme would not be considered to, ha to have a material impact or harm um, on the wider highway network. However, notwithstanding this, mitigation to address the community of impacts of the whole allocation of HSG8 would be required. <coughs> Highways have requested a contribution of eight, just um, £83,500 towards improvements to the junctures of Rugby Road and New Street, Rugby Road and Whitherbutt Road and Shilton Lane, Rugby Road, Arden Road, um, Neaton Road, Western Lane and the Neaton Road and Cleveland Road. Schemes are proposed which would improve the access, access, accessibility to and from the site by sustainable forms of transport. As part of the site allocation for the housing site at H, for HSG8, it is proposed by the county for a dedicated cycle route to be provided along the B4029 between Borkington and Bedworth, and this application would contribute to that. And highways have requested £53,000 towards this. The development will also provide a contribution towards a Toucan Crossing on Bedworth Road. To improve um, connectivity, highways have requested a condition that a combined cycleway and footway um, is provided, pre preferably on the northern side of the access to the site, which would link Coventry Road through the site and connecting to the rest of HSG8 and beyond. And this is covered under condition 12. 
The nearest bus stops are situated on Coventry Road, approximately 650 metres walking distance from the application site. There is also a bus stop located on School Road, and the site is also approximately a kilometre away from Bullkitton District Centre. In terms of flooding, the site is within Flood Zone 1. In terms of surface water drainage, the site will drain its surface water to a new pi um, pipe balancing facility. Um, the flood risk team at the county have no objection subject to conditions. With regards to ecology and biodiversity, um, an ecological assessment and arboricultural assessment have been submitted. The ecological assessment recommended further protective species surveys for bats, reptile and great crested newts, which have, also, which have been carried out. The survey showed that there was no ev evidence of bats using the dwelling that is to be demolished as a place of shelter and that there are poor roosting opportunities in the building. The demolition of the dwelling would not affect nesting birds or bats. The site is known to hold a population of great crested newts and due to the gradual decline in pond quality on the site, there is no method by which to establish the current population size. The longevity of great crested newts suggests that they may well remain present on site despite the loss of viable breeding ponds. A programme of works has been submitted with the application. The parks team have reviewed this and have requested that a further um, great crested newt document, including a sequencing plan, sequencing plan sorry, is submitted, which they have confirmed can be conditioned and is included as condition 10. Biodiversity impact calculations have been carried out, which show a net gain in biodiversity. Parks have, result, have requested some amendments to the landscape plan, which could have an impact on these calculations. And they have suggested that a clause can be added to the 106, and that a final um, biodiversity impact assessment will be agreed, and that if a net loss is, is occurring, a payment at a specified rate would be made to offset the loss. In terms of ecology, um, the archaeological team at the county have stated that it is probable that the site was in agricultural use from at least the medieval period, but there is a potential for some unknown archaeological deposits. They have therefore requested a programme of archaeological fieldwork, which is covered under condition 14. A number of 106 contributions have been requested, as detailed on the screen, including for healthcare services at, the, at George Elliott Hospital, highways improvements, plain open space provision, sports and leisure facilities, improvements um, of facilities at Borgerty Village Centre, libraries and public rights of way. The applicant has agreed to do these contributions. The recommendation is therefore approval, subject to the completion of a legal agreement and the conditions are set out on the agenda. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. I have one speaker on this item, that's the agent, Mr. Timothy. So, uh, Mr. Timothy, you have your three minutes where I am, Mr. Timothy. Thank you. Whenever you're ready. Chairman and members of the committee, good evening. Um, as your office has just outlined, the site forms part of the strategic allocation known as HSG8. As an, as an allocated site, the principle of residential development is therefore acceptable and supported by the policies contained in your borough plan. The site is evidently well located to existing and committed residential uh, development. It is immediately available for development and is hence deliverable within the next five years. The proposal would thus contribute towards meeting the housing needs of your borough. This is an outline application with all matters reserved save for the means of access. The proposed development can accommodate up to 42 houses as proposed. 26% of these, that's 11 houses, are to be affordable houses in compliance with your policy H2. Um, the site can provide a range of housing in terms of type and tenure, which is, cons uh, which is consistent with the object, uh, uh, policy HSG8, and condition 23 will secure the appropriate housing mix. The site is within convenient walking distance of facilities within Bulkington. These faci facilities can be accessed by cycle. The proposals would not result in an over-reliance on private transport, and the site would be suit a suitable location for the proposed development. There are no objections from Warwickshire Highways. The proposals will contribute to securing off-site improvements to the highway network and cycle network. The technical report supporting the application demonstrate that the site can be developed without significant implications on environmental, cultural or heritage assets. Conditions 8 to 10, for example, secure all of the recommendations in terms of great crested newt and biodiversity. So in conclusion, the proposed development will secure the delivery of an allocated housing site. 
proposed development is entirely consistent with the policies in the bur borough plan and together with those policies to be found in the national planning policy framework. The applicant who sat next to me is pleased to enter into a section 106 agreement to secure the necessary improvements to local infrastructure. In these circumstances, please grant planning permission subject to the conditions in section 106 rec uh, obligations recommended to you by your officers. Thank you. Thank you. Do um, any members need any points of clarification? Councillor Cape. Um, it's just one about the, the heating. I'm, I'm wondering why we're still saying that we'll accept low emission boilers, gas, as opposed to transit into other methods. My response to that is it, it's proposed as a condition, isn't it, at the end. The, uh, ultimately, it's a matter for building regulations, and it's obviously something that is going to be phased out, and I can't anticipate where we'll be by the time we've still got a reserve matters application to go. So by the time the development commences on site, which could take a year, two years, who knows where the building regs will be there, but we obviously will be building in compliance with building regs as it stands at that time. Thank you, thank you very much. I think Claire has something just further to add to that. I mean, that is something that's normally re requested by our environmental health team as per our current air quality SPD, which is specified in there. Obviously, that will, could change when, as and when that's reviewed. And as the applicant, that agent said, as time progresses, other forms of um, heating boilers, whatever, <laughs> will, will come along. Thank you. Uh, so I see your hand, Councillor Hamsley. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, um, just a question really, are, are you happy with the closeness to, to the railway uh, as regards noise, etc.? Um, as your officer explained in her presentation, um, as part of the application submission, a, no a noise survey was undertaken and the recommendations of that noise survey so the recommendations in that noise survey that are proposed to be secured by conditions, we can live with those conditions, it's not a problem. So it's effectively high levels of double glazing and sound attenuation in the houses themselves. It's not an issue. Councillor. The reason I ask, and I'm not saying it's right, wrong, or, 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 or whatever, the wife's granddad lived in the last house on that road next to the next to the railway. And being in that house <coughs> at the time, when trains thundered past, the cups, the china used to rattle in the cupboard, etc. You know, so providing people are fully aware that are going to move into those houses, there may be some sort of noise or whatever. That's, uh, that's the only reason I'm questioning it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Hamza. I don't know if you want any comeback or not on that. I mean, any potential occupier of those houses will be fully cognizant of the railway line. It's, it's hard to miss. But as I said, the, we've used reputed people who have done noise surveys um, consistently along railway lines, certainly in projects I've been dealt with. We can put mitigation in place in the design of those dwellings to avoid that issue. Yeah, ju just to add, obviously, as the agent has mentioned, construction methods now are, you know, that they've advanced and they do take account that we're obviously having to put development alongside noise um, generating uses. So I think, you know, that, that is covered through, as the agent says, the assessment that's been done and the mitigation that's going to put in, be put into place, just to reassure you on that. Councillor Smith. Uh, not, not a question, uh, m more a, a point I've just noticed, and apologies, I missed this earlier. Um, I've got an interest in this. I represent the council on the board of Bulkington Village Centre uh, as a trustee, and I see that there are 106 contributions in there, so I don't feel I can sit in judgment of this. So. I'll, uh, I'll leave the room while you consider it. 
Okay, thank you, Councillor Smith. Okay, so um, in front of us then, we have a recommendation to grant planning permission subject to legal agreement and conditions as printed. So do I have a proposal and a seconder to enable this discussion? Councillor Wilson and Councillor Cape. Okay, so I'll open the floor to any members. Any members on this one? Councillor Wilson. Uh, thank you, Chair. I think the main point about this, apart from all the other technical um, uh, assessments that the officers have, have mm -hmm. conducted, mm -hmm. is that this is already allocated as part of the borough plan in, under site HSG8, which was adopted in 2019. Um, so really, our hands, again, unless there's a technical issue about it, which there doesn't appear to be, um, I think our hands are tied that it's already got a presumption of development on it by the fact it's been approved in the borough plan as much as we might not like it. So I think we just have to, in my view, Chair, get on with it and accept it for what it is. Um, I accept that there will be residents who don't like it, but we can't go back in time and change things, and we have a, a legal process to actually go through the review, and until that's completed one way or the other, we have to accept the policy as it stands. Thank you, Council. So any other members? Uh, Councillor Green. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, just look, I've got uh, concerns about the ecology of it all. It does mention it's on green bank land. Um, it mentions about the newts being disturbed and no work will be undertaken until that's resolved. Um, when will it be resolved? What's going to happen with that? Um, if the officers could give me a bit more detail, that would be very beneficial. Thank you. Thank you. Just to clarify, the, the site was previously green belt, it no longer is, it's now an allocation in the borough plan. Um, yeah, there are ecological issues as I explained in my report. Um, there is evidence of past um, great crested newt activity on the site, um, but a condition has been added, condition 10 I believe, to the recommendation that further um, works are carried out in connection with that. Bear with me. Yes, so basically, they can't start, um, no development shall, can't commence until that work's carried out. Now, I don't know what the timelines will be in terms of that work, but no development, built development ca can't start until that, um, those details have been submitted and agreed which will consult the various relevant consultees on. Can, can I just ask the applicant when these were last done, these uh, surveys? Do you have a, an approximate date? Yeah. Small population. The, uh, the, from your planning history, you'll see that there was a previous application on this site going back to 2015, which was, um, about, I think it was Bell Waste made that application and that identified a small population of newts on there. A survey was undertaken prior to the submission of the application, which, so that would have been in 2020, the survey was undertaken. And during the course of this application, um, Mr. Crossley from the Parks Department has asked for further habitat suitability work to be undertaken, which has been undertaken and submitted, and that's resulted in us agreeing the, the former condition that you've got now. Um, we were, by the time that he made the request for that further information, we were out of time to do what they call an eDNA um, survey, which is, which is the absolute copper bottom guarantee that there's, whether there is or is no um, newts there. And effectively, that condition will require us to do that before we can do any work on site and then do the appropriate mitigation measures to accommodate them. We're happy that we can, we, there will be no harm to great crested newts as a result of this. I think just to reassure the councillor, obviously the um, council's ecologist is very passionate about this subject area and I think you know it is the one area where we've actually been able to come to agreement so just to reassure you that everything is covered in that aspect councillor. Councillor Green. Um, yeah thank you and it is reassuring to know that however 
it does seem to infer that, that the pools where the newts live would be removed. And so if there were, like, um, I can't say how the development can continue and the newts be there too. And that's why basically the programme of works have got to be agreed so that only certain things can happen until other, other survey work has been undertaken. And the, as I say, the ecologist is happy that that meets the regulations and requirements. Sadly, I also suspect with this one, because uh, HSG8 is already under current development by um, another developer as well, who has also done the same, um, so does Taylor Wimpy, in fact, the developer. Um, and part of me wonders, you know, the ecology has changed since it's been done. So even more up-to-date surveys would perhaps not reflect fully what was there, um, you know, because a lot of that wildlife has now been frightened off and has moved off. So um, there probably is actually a reduced amount of wildlife, sadly, there because because of what's already going on um, in, in the area council agree. And I say that's I'm speaking now as, as a, somebody who's, who lives in the in the village and is a, a local sort of person so you know we have seen some sort of drop-offs in some of our wildlife so um read into that what you will okay um councillor hammersley thank you chair <clears throat> the um the people i do feel really sorry for is number 90 and number 92 um uh because the house is going to be in between is going to be knocked down for the road in out i'm assuming there's no other access in and out of this site so i would like to think that you as the developer uh, would show some sympathy and be sympathetic with uh, construction vehicles in and out of this site during construction uh, and the, it does say that you're putting a uh, a boarded fence to the boundaries of 1992 I, I'm assuming a, a long, along the roadway but uh, let um, again I'm not making any conditions all I'm doing is putting myself in the shoes of 1992 that this fence is of a su suitable construction with some sound deadening uh, and you've you've looked at this to be as sympathetic with the works while it's on ongoing Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Um, I, I would also sort of speak on this matter as well. So I, I am the local councillor for Bulgs Award, as, as was Councillor Smith, two councillors per ward. Uh, and, and I'm not overly happy. I mean, this road, the Coventry Road, is known as the Mad Mile. I don't know if you're aware of that. And it's known as the Mad Mile for a very good reason by all the local residents, because people will drive up and down that road. It's a dead straight road, and they will do 60, 70 miles per hour. Um, and before anyone sort of starts to sort of say, no, that's not the case, um, I am sort of a community speed watch uh, person, as is Councillor Smith, and we have stood there many a time from a designated point, which the police have taken, and we have sat there measuring um, the speed of passing vehicles. And obviously it's a 40 mile an hour speed limit road as you come into the village. And certainly we, we've, we've clocked people regularly in excess of 50 miles an hour um, going into the high 60s, low 70s even. Uh, so I, I do have genuine concerns in terms of the, the highway side of it because I'm, I'm not sure how well thought through this entrance and exit is for a start. I, I need a lot more reassurance. Um, and I think the residents would as well. Bear in mind as well, this is um, an arterial route into Coventry. So the Coventry Road will take you into Coventry. Um, a lot of people in Bulkington do work in Coventry and will be using that road on a regular basis. So actually during peak hours, and I, you know, I'm one of those people that travels down that road because I do work in Coventry and I drive down here every day. Uh, and I've seen some absolutely um, crazy driving down there. Um, you know, particularly on the way home in the evenings when you've got people overtaking and rushing and it just goes really, really silly. So I am really concerned. Um, I've noticed also in terms of the Section 106 money that's being spent, um, most of it isn't actually being spent to improve the lives or the, the, the highway conditions for the residents. So although there's a lot of money being spent for highways, um, a lot of those roads are not actually part of this directly part of this development, but in other parts of the village. So although they may have 
um, some benefit in those areas to, to calm traffic. Um, it's going to do absolutely nothing on the um, on this particular road. And I have spoken to Warwickshire County Council about this. I've raised the concerns myself many times um, over the last three or four years um, about sort of speeding and about highways. And they're prepared to do nothing. And we're now looking to add more houses exiting onto that highway. Um, and we're still doing really very little there. Uh, we're adding a, a cycle path, which again, um, I, I don't think it's going to add to it particularly. I, I think a cycle path here, um, bearing in mind you've also got the railway line, um, that's going to cause a narrowing point there as well. Um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not convinced, I, I'm really not. I have some grave concerns about this um, development and uh, uh, for those grounds, I'm, I'm very unhappy to support this um, this evening. Do I have any other members? No, okay, in that case, can we go to the vote? So all those in favour? Okay, against? And any abstentions? Okay, so that is um, carried and we'll obviously now move to the, uh, the next stage towards the reserve matters. Okay, thank you. Um, if we could have our third item, please, Claire, when you're ready. This application seeks consent for works to a common oak tree covered by TPO 707. The works proposed relate to a crown lift by 5.5 metres over the carriageway and a crown lift of 3 metres over the footway. The applicant is Warwickshire County Council and they have confirmed that the works are required to provide the required clearance over the highway. The tree is located within a verge located to the front of numbers 142 and 144 Smower Lane and to the northern side of the highway. An objection has been received as detailed on the agenda. As per the planning practice guidance, officers do not consider that matters relating to the impacts upon the privacy of surrounding properties can be considered as part of, the, as part of this application for tree works. When assessing proposed works to a tree covered by TPO, the tree's visibility to the public, its condition, age and remaining life expectancy, its function within the, in, within the landscape and ultimately its, imp in its importance to the local environment are considered. The Council's tree officer has been consulted on the application and no objection has been raised to the proposed works. Given the scope of the works, the application is not considered to result in any adverse impact upon the public amenity value offered by the tree and the works proposed will ensure that the tree is appropriately managed. The proposal is considered to be justified and will be a proportionate solution to the concerns of the applicant, which is in this case is Warwickshire County Council, and meets the requirements of sound arboreal culture. The proposal would result in no unacceptable public immunity impacts and would ensure the long-term health of the tree would be protected. It is therefore recommended that the application be approved. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. Um, so we have no speakers on this matter. Um, so we'll look at the recommendation, which is to recommend approval. Um, so do I have a proposer and a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Wilson and Councillor Hamsley. Okay, so do I have any members on this one who wish to speak? Councillor Hamsley. Yes. <clears throat> uh, being in my local area, I walked under this um, Sunday, this tree, it is, it does overhang over the road. Any high-sided vehicles, double-decker buses, if they should go that way, they'll have no windows left or whatever could be damaged. So um, I'm in agreement with this tree to, uh, to um, uh, be maintained so that it doesn't overhang, overhang the carriageway. Thank you, Chap. Yeah, so the work is to actually have the crown uplifted, so obviously high-sided vehicles, etc. Um, wouldn't come into contact with it and, as you quite rightly said, probably break or damage their windows. Um, do I have any other members on this? No, okay, in that case, I will go to the vote. Though. All those in favour of the work being carried out? Okay, so that's unanimous, thank you. 
And then we'll go on uh, when you're ready, Claire, to our final item of the evening. Thank you. This application seeks consent for works for trees in St Giles Churchyard, which are covered by tree, um, TPO 300. The TPO covers 15 trees comprising 12 common limes located to the southern boundary of the site, as well as one common ash, one sweet chestnut and one Italian older, which are all located to the western boundary of the site. The works proposed relate to the pollarding of the trees back to the previous pollard points. Thereafter, it is proposed to carry out the same works on an ongoing maintenance basis every three to nine year, years as per British standard. The application is presented to committee as the applicant, Councillor Damon Brown, is a member of the council. When assessing proposed works to trees covered by TPO, the tree's visibility to the public, its condition, age and remaining life expectancy, its function within the landscape and ultimately its importance to the local environment are considered. The council's tree officer has been consulted on the application and no objection has been raised to the proposed tree works. Given the scope of the proposed work, which is limited to maintenance works, the application is not considered to result in any adverse impact upon the public amenity value offered by each of the trees. The proposal is considered to be justified and would be a proportionate solution to the concerns um, of the applicant and meets the requirements of sound arboriculture. The proposal would result in no un unacceptable public immunity impacts and would ensure the long-term health of the trees would be protected. It is therefore recommended that, that the application be approved. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. And I have one speaker on this, and that's uh, Councillor Brown. So, Councillor Brown, when you're ready, you have your three minutes. Thank, thank, thank you. Um, although I'm the applicant formally for this application, um, it really comes from the Council itself, but it it's a situation where the council does not want to apply to itself for permission to do something um, that it was doing historically. This is a closed churchyard. The council's due to maintain the trees. Um, the, it was done in the past, but for some reason, the previous permissions, if you like, were allowed to lapse. Um, in recent years, residents have asked me about the works to the trees. Why are we not doing it? Um, I consulted with the council and the planning uh, the tree officer who said he would like to do it but we needed permission to do the works because they're covered by a tree protection order hence this application um, i'm familiar with the site i was there just a couple of days ago local volunteer groups doing some really good work in this churchyard to keep it tidy and to actually save us as a council from having to do work um, but these trees are now huge and they overshadow the houses lying to the south, which are accessed by a footpath only. There's no road access to them. Um, and it does make, the leaves of, of, from them especially make life challenging at tree fall time. So I would just ask that uh, we give this the go ahead and that we permit the works to be carried out ASAP really, because the residents have waited many years for this to be reinstated. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Uh, any members' points of clarification? No? Okay, so I'll move uh, directly then to the recommendation, which is to approve the application so the trees can uh, be pollarded. Um, do I have any... Do I have a proposer and a seconder? Okay, so Councillor Wilson and Councillor Smith, thank you. Um, any members? No, in that case, I'll move straight to vote. All those in favour? Okay, and that is carried unanimously. Okay, that concludes this evening's Planning Applications Committee. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for their attendance and a safe journey home. Thank you.